Aquafina, I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Flow make digits, I mind my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, a hey, you want us rep run when I tell a big piece. Love is love. Love is love. Love is love. Kings and queens, welcome back to the Queendom of Creativity. Today I'll be reviewing the Sensational Cloud 9 Swiss Lace Wig. This is the Tyrena. She is a 13 by 6 wig. I purchased this wig for $60 at my local beauty supply store, but I will link it down below where you can find it online. I will be showing you guys how I personally prep my hair and lay my wig. So I'm starting out with hair that has just come down from braids. I know I probably should have been washing my hair. So I'm going to start by detangling my hair in preparation to lay it flat under my wig. I started off with some Blue Magic and Cream of Nature Moisturizing Cream just to moisturize my hair since I am coming straight out of braids. Once your hair is detangled, next I went ahead and brushed it straight back like I was going to put it in a bun. I'm going to braid in that same direction that I just got done brushing my hair in because that is what's going to help my hair lay flat. I'm going to do this four times around my whole head so I'm going to have four braids in all, which is not bad for braiding under a wig if you have pretty thick or uh, thicker hair like mine. And I thought I would mention this if you're also going to try and style your hair fresh out of braids. It helps if you do the four sections like me, but in each of your sections, divide your hair and detangle it a little bit at a time if that makes sense. And once you're just about done, this is what the front section should look like. See, it's pretty flat. And in case anyone was curious, this is about how much hair I lost from detangling. I had my hair in braids for about two weeks. I know, I can't keep a style for nothing. So this is what it looks like all braided. I look like Pippi long stocking, but what you wanna do from here, you can pull your braids back to where they're not laying on top of each other and your hair will lay flat. I'll show you guys this from the front as well as the back so you can see what I mean. This is literally all I do when I wear wigs. I don't even pin it down. At this point, you can pin it down. Show you guys the reason I do not pin it down. It is because the inside construction of most wigs, at least this one, it has four combs. One in the back, one on the top side, one on the other top side, and one in the middle. And while you're setting your wig in place on your head, these combs can tend to snatch anything that they can catch a hold on to. So it's not fun, but you can still tuck it up under by fill so that none of your braids are overlapping. But back to the construction of the wig. Like I said, it is a 13 by six, which means it is 13 inches ear to ear, six inches front to back of lace. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but it is Swiss lace. And ladies, what we're going to do with our lace, we're going to make it look like our scalp. The lace did come transparent, but what we're going to want to do is tint it to match the color of our skin. I had already cut off the front tab of lace and started trying to tint the wig off camera. Then I realized, wait, I'm not recording. And it was tinted unevenly, which was not a bad thing because I will still get to show you guys. I preferred way to tint a synthetic wig for a quick install. And so today I will be using the Even Tinted Lace Spray in the color medium brown, but there are several products that you can use to tint your lace, but I recommend playing around with different products just to find the product that you like best. But you just kind of want to shake up the spray to kind of evenly distribute the product. It kind of sounds like when you're shaking up a can of spray paint and spray it on in layers all over the lace a little bit at a time and the product will get on your countertop, your clothes, whatever you're spraying it over. So I, I did go ahead and pull my sleeves back.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna take the straps in the back of the wig and, and clip them in on the tightest setting on the other side because I am going to be wearing this wig glueless and I will not be using a wig grip, a wig cap, or anything under my wig. I just wanna make sure it is fitting secure though while I'm wearing it. Okay, so we are just about ready to put our wig on our head just to help the wig look a little less wiggy though. And as you can see, she's shiny. <laughs> she's giving Edna Mode shiny bob. But before I put my wig on my head, I brush it out completely and I flip it upside down and give her a shake, like a punk rock type of thing. Just because I want it to look less wiggy and more bouncy on my head. And I will show you guys in a sec here the effect that it has to me. Let me know if you guys also can tell a difference in how much more body and how much more bouncy the wig is after following those, just those two steps. So I'm just going to place the wig on my head and give it one more quick shake while my head is upside down. And a major key, in my humble opinion, is to place your wig on top of your hairline or just barely in front of your hairline. And I know I have to be careful and inclusive with this next tip because everyone is different. Some have receding hairlines, no hairlines. Others have straight hairlines or widow's peak like myself. But no worries, whatever you have, girl, you got it. A foolproof guideline to laying your wig is to create an imaginary line right in front of your ears and adjust your wig and lay it there. Next, I'm just gonna tuck my braids under one side at a time or two braids at a time on one side. And while this clip is sped up, I'm actually taking my time to fill around and make sure that none of the braids are overlapping. From there, I just tuck the comb under the final braid that I tuck under. So this is essentially how the wig looks fresh out of the box with no help. And as you can see, there's a line of demarcation there where my forehead and the wig do not meet. It does not flow at all. Um, this is where you may want to consider pulling forward some baby hairs if there is that line of demarcation. A lot of wigs will come with baby hairs. This wig did come with baby hairs, but if not, that's okay because you can pull some forward. And with pulling hairs forward, the point is to make the hairline look natural. So I'm gonna take my fingers and randomly pull some hairs forward to make the hairline of the wig appear more natural. So it may not be perfect, it may even be a little thick, but I assure you that's okay. We can thin it out later on with our scissors. I am actually gonna go in with the Ors Olive Oil, Olive Oil and Castor Oil Super Hold Super Wig Grip Gel. I placed a picture here on the screen as well so you guys can see it up close. This is not a wig glue. It is not going to glue your wig down. Um, this is a gel. It will flake on you too if you use too much. So be modest if you decide to use this gel to lay your baby hairs down on your wig. I decided not to speed this portion of the video up so if you don't need tips on how to pull baby hairs forward or to pluck the hairline to make it look more natural you can skip ahead about 30 seconds but i'm going to go ahead and do one side at a time for you guys and what i'm doing when i'm pulling the hairs forward i'm not even looking at where i'm pulling i'm looking specifically at the hairline because my goal personally is to make that hairline look more genuine i don't know about you guys but let's just be real Whenever anyone is looking at your wig and are wondering if it's a wig, the first place their eyeballs are going to go is your hairline. So there's no science behind actually laying the baby hairs. I personally use a down and sweep motion. So I place my gel going straight down towards my eyebrows and then I'll take my comb, my toothbrush, whatever I'm using to form the swoops and I will go in a sweeping motion. So again, I'm placing my gel going straight down towards my eyebrows or towards my chin. And then I'm going to take my comb or toothbrush and go down and in a sweeping motion. So down and sweep. And I hope I'm not losing you guys here. I know this looks 
absolutely crazy because it is super thick but once this hardens which is gonna do pretty fast so once it's hardened I'm gonna go back in and little bit by little bit I'm going to lift and cut and I'm gonna keep doing this until the baby hairs look natural And if it still looks a little crazy to you, after you've done all the chopping that you're comfortable with doing, you want to want to go back in with a fine tooth comb. I'm using a two-sided, like, actual edge comb. And I'm just going to comb out the bottom of it so it's not so rigid and straight, if that makes any sense. Once I have... The baby hairs to my liking i'm going to go in with my foundation i use the clinique acne solutions with two percent salicylic acid in the color golden amber um, that's my foundation and so that's also what i'm going to use just around the hairline right behind the baby hairs to to add one more layer of brown <laughs> i don't that doesn't make sense to make the wig look a little bit closer to my skin and that is pretty much it and please don't ask me why i had my left hand glued to my head while i was trying to show you guys this i don't know looking back i feel like giving my own self whooping for that but Next is the fun part, now we style. I was able to come up with five different styles for this one $60 synthetic wig, including turning it into a headband wig as well, which added another layer of security for me and made this the perfect grab and go wig. So now I'm just going to stop talking and let you guys enjoy the rest of the video.
yeah.